So I want to go over the error variable a little bit. And this is a neat little uh, variable that you have in PowerShell. So you'll notice that I just started this uh, ISC up. I haven't actually run any code. And there's an error variable already there. This error is part of PowerShell. It's just there. When I run it, you'll see that there's nothing there. Let's go ahead and run the count. So you'll see it doesn't have anything in it right now. But as errors come up in your scripts, this variable will fill up with those errors. So let's go ahead and run this bit of code. And you'll see that I got an error from that. And that was not a good thing to do. And when I run count, we have one item in that variable. So I'm going to run that code. And that was a good bit of code. So when I count, nothing is going to happen. But let's do one more right here. So now we have two errors. And when I count my error variable, you'll see that there are two objects. This is just an array and it collects the errors inside. So because it's an array, we can index into it. And you'll see that the first item of the array is the most recent error that occurred. So I have the first error, which was the directory error. And then I have the second one, which was from the get content. And because these are this is an array and it has individual objects we can use get member and see what else we can do with those individual objects so when i pipe it to get member you'll notice that there's a, there's some methods and there's some properties and the properties can be accessed very easily so let's look here we have category info let's see what happens when we check the category info of the latest error that occurred. So the category, it's a right error. Uh, the activity was new item. The reason was uh, IO exception. The target was Z colon backslash and the target type is a string. And not only can we access the properties of that item, we can access the specific properties of the property of that item. So if we wanna just pull back the activity, we can do so. If we want to just pull back the category, we can do so as well. So it offers a lot of flexibility in uh, searching out bits of information of your errors. So let's just look at something else here. Fully qualified error ID, new item IO error, comma Microsoft PowerShell commands, new item commands. So uh, let's say that you don't want any specific information. Um, you could do something like this, even, even if you don't want to, you could do something like this. And let's say that you just want to get the exception message. So you'll see that I ran error, uh, or I took the error variable. I pipelined it to for each, and then I called the exception property for each of the items in the error. And you'll see the file name directory name or volume label syntax is incorrect. That was the latest error that we got and access to the path C colon users furnace is denied. Um, so that is something that you can do as well. But let's say that you want to just uh, get all of this and send it to a file. Well, that's very easy as well. You can just redirect it. So I'll just send this to um, a file on my desktop, we'll call it errors.txt. I already have one there. I'll just overwrite it. And when I open it up, you'll see that now I have a text file that has the error messages. Um, and if I wanted to, I could organize it a little bit better and use that for each loop to select only the exceptions and then send only the exceptions to the text file as well. So uh, this variable offers a lot of flexibility in being able to track the errors in your script, select which bits of information from the errors in your script, and to um, send either everything or just certain bits of that information to a file or to somewhere else. Um, so that's it. That is the amazing error variable in PowerShell. Thanks for watching.